captain, we have a proximity alert with the planet Gigeri. We are approaching collision. Quix, get somebody on the comms. Enter in the security code. Two, five, seven. Security code accepted. Hello, devoted geeks, and welcome to episode four of Calm Talk, the podcast extension of Geek Devotions, the YouTube show from a couple of devoted geeks to, that are devoted to letting people know that they are loved. I am Celeste, and to my right here is Dallas. And on today's show, we're talking about one of my, uh, I guess you'd say, childhood memory focused movies, Tron. This is one of those movies I watched as a kid. I grew up with it. It fascinated me. Uh, as as a devoted geek who's into technology and into sci-fi, this was up my alley. Anybody raised through the 80s and 90s, you know exactly what I'm talking about, how, why Tron is so special. That said, we're addressing a great travesty. We're actually correcting a travesty today. Oh, it, my. It's, it's a travesty that took place, and we're correcting it. And that simply is this. Um, Celeste hasn't seen Tron. Nope, I haven't. <laughs> and I refuse to watch the newest one until I've seen the original because that that's just who I am. I like to understand things. So if I had seen, if the new one had been a remake rather than a sequel, I think I would have been okay watching it eventually. I still would have had problems. Right. But I think I could have been okay. But once I realized it was a sequel, I was like, no, I have to see the first one. Right. You don't watch the second Hunger Games and not watch the first one. <laughs> you don't watch The Next Generation until you've watched the first sure. Star Trek. Like, this is, you just don't do this. Right. Well, we're going to correct this. I, I'm a fan of the, of the franchise. I, I watched the original Tron. I watched all the special features from it. Um, I watched Tron Uprising, the animated series that Disney had. And I've seen the new movie. Big fan of the franchise. So what we're going to do today, it, because obviously we're not going to watch the whole thing with you guys on air with us. So for today's episode, what's going to happen is, uh, here in a moment, we're going to watch the preview. And I'm going to ask Celeste to give me her thoughts on it. Um, give me some predictions, depending on what she knows and heard from from the past. Because this is really interesting, because it's a fresh eye. It's very few people that I regularly talk about geek stuff have not seen Tron. So this is going to be real interesting to have these fresh eyes on this franchise. And uh, then we're going to watch the movie. And then we'll come back and we will talk about um, what she thought. And now, for those of you who are joining who also are not, have never seen Tron, the, the IMDB uh, describes Tron as a computer hacker is abducted into the digital world and forced to participate in gladiatorial games where he, his only chance of escape is with the help of the heroic security program. Talk about a bug in the system. <laughs> exactly. Uh, obviously, this was directed by uh, Steven Leisenberg, who uh, he did quite a few things, actually. Um, I remember hearing his name growing up. He's done several movies. Uh, I am straight up cheating. I'm pulling it up on IMDb. Um, but he did Tron Legacy. He did Tron. Um, he did... Where's that one movie that he did that I was like, oh, yeah. Um, that one movie. <laughs> and Animal Olympics. It was... I don't know. It was weird. He I watched did the it years character ago. development. What does that mean? Did he flesh out the characters? Basically. Like, Someone was like, hey, we have a chick. And he's like, okay, she's a <laughs> teenager. She's a adult. Like, how does that work? Yeah, that's basically what happened is he, um, he worked on all that stuff. He worked on all the aspects of it and put it together. Um, he worked on Kingdom Hearts. He did. For Kingdom- Tron. Yes. <laughs> Well, because Kingdom Hearts was a, it was a Disney franchise, everything obviously, but it, it brought in a lot of stuff. So, but it was, it was directed by him. But there's some really big name actors in it. Uh, I say big name; they're not huge, but they're people that I've grown up with, and a lot of people recognize. You had Jeff Bridges, who plays the main character. Who, is he the one your mom thinks is cute? Um, yes, but no. Like oh. young Jeff Bridges, yes. Modern one, no. Uh, I forgot who the other guy was. Oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, so he's probably the biggest one. David Warner was, uh, was, a, was, is obviously a major actor in this and he's done a lot of stuff. I think who, who you is, would, who is he? He was, uh, his picture is too little for me to see. I know I'm bringing him up. You will recognize him uh, when I pull him up. No, I don't. Okay. Well, okay. Let me go over some of the <laughs> movies he's done. Oh, he was in Titanic. He's going to be in Mary Poppins Returns. <laughs> yes, he will be. 
Uh, let's see. We're going through the thing. Uh, go back further. He's in Scooby Doo. He's in Scooby Doo. He was in Men in Black, the the series, the TV series. Didn't see that. Planet of the Apes, Didn't Secret see Garden. That. Didn't see that. Um, there's a lot of things you have not seen. Yes. Star Trek Cleon Academy video game. I didn't play that. Uh, <laughs> Um, let's see here. There's a lot of things he was here. He's a, he's Buzz a, Lightyear? Huh? He, no, he's Lord a- Angstrom. He played Raja Ghoul in the Batman Beyond. Yes, he did. That's kind of cool. It is very cool. Um, see here. He was in the TV movie Cinderella. Um, get down to like the main movies he's done. Um, he was played Raja Ghoul in the Superman series. He narrated one of the Winnie the Pooh movies. Right. Now, legitimately, awesome. where I recognize him a lot from is from the Outer Limits TV series. Because I grew up a lot on that. Is that the that. one with the weird sand things? Yes. Oh, yes, it is. that was weird. The Outer Limits. <laughs> that was weird. So, but he's one of these great actors who, like, I say great because he always plays these evil characters. And, like, his voice is very iconic. He he brings a, a, a level of things. You're like, yeah, so you sound evil. he's the bad guy evil. in Tron? Yes, he's the bad guy. Okay. Or one of the bad guys. Um, but, yeah, so he's got a long, long history. He was in Gargoyles. Those, again, 80s kids. He grew up with our uh, gar- gargoyles. He played uh, Archmage, which we had. We might actually do that. He was in played Roger Gould throughout the entire Batman animated series, uh, which again I love. I did not know this. He was in Biker Mark Biker Mice from Mars. What? <laughs> it was the nineties. Okay. Mm. <laughs> hey, he was in Lois and Clark. He was. Oh, he played Jarrell. Yeah. I don't think I saw that particular episode, but that's cool. So I think I saw pretty much all of those. My mom and dad and I for a while were going through those episodes in um, order of of like seasons on right. VHS. Now, how far are you into Star Trek: Next Generation? Um, I am only I have I started season two. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he. He was in that because I saw right. that, that he was in Star Trek Next Gen. Okay. But I haven't gotten to that point. So I'll see him again later. Yeah, you will. So so that's what it's about. We're going to watch the um, the preview now of, of it, the trailer. And Celeste, I need you to tell me your thoughts on it and um, um, when we're done. And then we'll go on from there, okay? Sounds good. All right. And we're back. Uh, we just finished watching the preview of Tron. Celeste, what are your, some of your initial thoughts on it? Well, I kind of wonder if that's what my computer is doing when it freezes up. <laughs> like, if that's what's going on when you get the little circle of doom. Of right. Like, oh, heck. Right. So, all right. So, obviously, um, this is a dated movie. This is from 1982. Yes. So, um, let me give a few things. Um, before I was born. It was before you were born. Only two years before I was born. Now, some interesting aspects about Tron. Um, it was the first movie of its kind to, to do computer graphics the way it's doing. Mm. So when you watch it, you need to understand that they're doing a lot of cutting edge stuff. I mean, this is like so, Disney was pulling all the stops. So even though to us now it looks old and right. bad, like it looks like they, like if this was made today exactly the same, mm-hmm. I would say that they were trying to make it look retro. Right. But this is retro because it was the original. Yeah, this is like the original retro, and it's really quite interesting. Um, this is before the internet really kicked off. Oh. Uh, bef- well, that's good information. Before like home computers became a thing, um, a lot of these things like we're watching, like they're imagining what's happening. I was watching the videos earlier, and um, people were talking about you know how. You know, there was like a disconnect for them, like watching this, and then going home, playing the Tron video game, and how it wasn't the same. Okay. Uh, and there, it was kind of disenchanting, but it inspired a lot of young people uh, to probably do what they're doing today. Right. So, um, so knowing that this cutting edge technology at, of the time um, and some of that stuff, what are you expecting to take place in this movie? Um. Well, I'm expecting to go a lot of, he looks like Bullock, because that was the first thing I said when I saw young Jeff Bridges, is he looks like Detective Bullock from Gotham. See previous podcasts. (laughs) Um, But, I don't know, I think hearing that it was cutting edge, I'm expecting to see something that would be considered a classic, because typically, if you're geeking out that hard about it, it's, it's a classic. It's kind of like when we watched... What was it? Logan's Run? Yeah. Like, that movie was slow, but because you enjoyed the 
filmography of it. Mm -hmm. And you were excited about that and sharing that with me because I had not seen that. Right. I enjoyed it. Like, I wouldn't watch that movie by myself. But I appreciate the storyline. I appreciate what they were doing. Right. So I'm kind of expecting the same thing with this. Like, I don't expect this to be like a, hey, let's buy this movie and watch this all the time. Right. But I do expect to enjoy it. Okay, that sounds fair. I enjoy it. Now, I want to encourage you guys to watch this also if you haven't watched Tron. Uh, we got our, the copy we're watching today came from our local library. Yay, library. Uh, so we appreciate them for that. Um so watch it if you haven't had a chance to watch it. And um, if you have watched it, send us your thoughts and your feedback. Tweet us at, at Geek Devotions, G-E-E-K-D-E-V-O-T-I-O-N-S. That's a lot of vocabulary. If you're he, to, Quite honestly, it should be on your phone if you're listening to us on podcasts. He had to think a lot about that one. <laughs> or, or send us messages on Facebook. And, and while we're at it, um, hey guys, follow our, our social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Geek Devotions, cross the board. We try to make it easy for you guys. And uh, communicate with us. Tell us your thoughts. And on the flip side of this, because we're about to sign off and go watch the movie, and we're going to come back, and Celeste and I are going to discuss in a little more detail. But we want you guys um, to communicate with us. But on the flip side of this, we'll be announcing this week's Devoted Geek of the Week. And, and what's cool about it is not just one person. It's a very special group. But you're going to hear more about that on the flip side. So, Celeste, are you ready to dive in? To the 80s, into my childhood, to the probably the way that my brain works. There's been a lot of movies that have opened up the way your mind works. <laughs> and I'm not sure I need to delve deeper in, but let's go. Yeehaw! <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys soon. Alright, and we are back. We just finished watching Tron. And, uh, and um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a couple things. Celeste, we're going to ask you... What your thoughts were on the movie? Mm-hmm. Um, I want you to tell me something you uh, that was like, well, this you didn't really care for about the movie, maybe. Okay. If there was something that's like you're like, yeah, this was great, and then I want you to tell me what you really enjoyed about the movie. Okay. All right. So, all right. So we'll start off from the beginning. Uh, what did you think of the movie? Um, overall, I enjoyed it. Like after a while, you kind of forgot that it was bad animation, <laughs> and every once in a while, you remembered. But it's like. I don't know. It's 1982. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, at the time, it was great animation. Mm -hmm. So, it's... I don't know. There were times where I was like, really? Really? And there was times where it was like straight cartooning. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's weird. Like when the the bug things came out of the floor. Yeah, those were straight cartoons. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Kind of want a bit. (laughs) A bit, yeah. I did too. I thought it was cool. Yes. No. No. (laughs) It reminds me of the... um, and and you haven't played this game, but the sprite from or the fairy from uh, Legends of Zelda. I forget which which game it was. It might have been one. Because um, the one that I'm playing, it's a little bitty snot. I know, no, no, no. This is like this is a little fairy in the thing. Face. And he said, he goes, "Hey, listen, hey, listen." It was in the N64 one. I can't remember the name of it now, but it was really it was interesting. Uh, yes. Right. The, the, you said something interesting. The fact that it was. Um, there were times you did you forgot that it was bad animation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's a testament to how well it's held up, at least. Yeah. And the cutting edge of it. Well, and it's like, I didn't have a problem with all the lines and the way things were done. Mm-hmm. It was just every once in a while, you could tell that they switched from CGI to a more cartoonish. It was right. like when there wasn't a human face in it. Right, right. So it was, they went straight to a hand-drawn, which is cool. I appreciate mm-hmm. hand-drawn animation, mm-hmm. but the mixture of the two is always weird to me. Yeah, sometimes it gets weird sometimes. All right, cool. All right, so um, would you say that was something you don't like about the movie? Was the the mixture of it so because it's, it's so dated? Or is there something else you're like, yeah, they didn't really care for this? Um, I think that... And the fact that the storyline was a little bit rushed. Okay. Like, they didn't take long getting you into the world. Right. Like, you, there was maybe 15 minutes before you were in the computer. Right. I would have appreciated a little bit more story development, kind mm-hmm. of getting gotten you used to the world. Mm-hmm. But again, at the time, some of that didn't need explanation. Sure. Like some of the things like the fact that there was a a an arcade mm-hmm. for adults. Like I guess <laughs> Well, was it just I mean, cuz in the show he talked about, you know, 
there's a lot of kids there. Yeah. So. so, well, but there was also alcohol present. But was that legal in the 90s? No, no. There was, it was a mixture. It was a mixture. I don't, I don't remember seeing alcohol. It was a Disney film. Are you sure? Well, okay. Maybe that's proving my date because there was a couple times that I had to correct myself because I was assuming something was happening. Yeah. Because it would happen in, in a movie now. Right. Yeah, I don't um, think that, uh, so maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was Coke or Tab or whatever they yeah. drank in the eighties. <laughs> no, because like in the eighties, um, arcades were a big deal. I see a red Solo cup, and I assume right. No, no. Like I said, this was this is the eighties, and um, arcades were a big, big yeah. deal. That was big business back in the eighties and early nineties, um, and it kind of tapered off. Of course, I was you know I were talking earlier about that was came with the invent of. You know, a lot of personal gaming devices. Yeah. That, well, that was the only place to get video games was an arcade back then. And I feel like that if somebody wanted to redo arcades, redo mm-hmm. that feeling of going somewhere and playing something, sure. they could just get all the personal systems and get all the newest games. Now it'd be expensive. Yeah. Because you'd have to stay up to date with the very newest games mm-hmm. so that people like you and me could go and pay up fee and go play sure because we're not going to go out and buy the newest stuff because it's just not in our budget no like we i and forget budget time wise i mean i've been (laughs) trying to play zelda for what two three months now and i've only actually accomplished it three times right so i mean for us it would be a hey let's go do this and and try this game out. Right. So they would have that audience, but at the same time, it might be too pricey for them because their audience wouldn't be the ones who would be there every night because those people are just going to go buy the systems. Yeah. So, I Well, it's know. one of those things. That, I mean, you see, you see events that have gaming stuff. Like when we went to go to um, Animania, Animania, they yeah, were yeah. having a... A tournament, and and we've heard of that. Like our friends over at Geeks and Grace, uh, I think it was last week week four. Shelly was talking about how she and her boyfriend went to a uh, Smash Brothers yes tournament, and uh, she was the only girl there, Poor uh, <laughs> and that uh, was competitive. So, uh, well, speaking, and it's like, oh yeah, uh, at GeekedCon, mm-hmm. they always have the Mario bus, yeah, yeah, and they have a competition, but they have it open for Whoever. gaming, yeah. 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 Absolutely. Speaking of gaming and stuff like that, because you may ever think of them, um, you know, we have, uh, we made contacts a couple years ago at GeekCon, or last year at GeekCon, at um, uh, Game Warriors. Oh, yeah. Uh, gaming for Cause, which is a, it's a local group. They do, uh, well, let me just read their about page. Game Warriors, uh, Gaming for Cause holds video game tournaments and other video game related events to help raise money for various charities. Uh, which uh, really cool company, really cool guys. Uh, they're on Facebook. Look up Game Warriors Gaming for a Cause um, because they would have the setup, or they would make yeah. the setup that was kind of like what you're talking about, where you get everything together and you do it. So, well, but they go in and do events. Yeah. So yeah. like, there's a specific thing. Typically, they're doing fundraisers. Yeah. Um. So what I'm talking about would be a stationary location. Sure. All right. So, um, back to the movie. What did you like? About like what was like you know, this was really cool about Tron. Um, I appreciated the fact that just from the little bits I know about circuitry, mm-hmm. I'm not part of the Borg. I don't really know <laughs> a lot about computer work, but just from what sure. I, I know and understand about circuitry, yeah, it looked really like what I would imagine mm-hmm. it looking like, especially after they defeated the MCP. Right. Like everything looked like what I would imagine a computer looking like. Um, I think that it was very imaginative. And even though the acting wasn't the best, because again, it was 82, it wasn't horrible. Right. Like I wasn't, with the exception of one or two times, I wasn't cringing at the acting. Right. Like, again, I would have preferred more story development, but it was it was pretty well done. Yeah, and and Jeff Bridges made me laugh. <laughs> he always makes me laugh. Um, I really enjoyed the movie too. Obviously, as we talked about, and like I like it says the '80s, so there was this awkwardness to it. But it was a really well done movie. I mean, yeah. Disney back in the '80s was really pumping out some quality stuff. I felt like for the time frame and the fact that it holds up so well. Now we were watching a digitally enhanced version. Yes. Obviously, I mean, if we busted out the old VHS, I mean, it would have been. Pretty rough well, to watch. We would have had to find something to play it. Oh, we have one. 
Oh. Yeah, we it's in it's in the other room. I forget about that one. Yeah. So, but um, it's I like I said I thought it was really good. I think it holds up well. Yeah. For a time now, obviously it's very dated. You're looking at technology that is. Um, from the 80s, so it's very much removed from today. I mean... I did appreciate the fact that they had the table computer, mm-hmm. which is a fairly new thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That this is a, an actual thing. Like, like it's like a, the Surface. <laughs> like a touch computer is the Surface. Right. And, I mean, I know then that was like, oh, it's so cool. And now we're going, oh, it's so cool. Because it's almost like it's practical almost for yeah, us Yeah, it really is. And not at all affordable, though. No, no. (laughs) But at the same time, it's like, did they invent that because they watched Tron? (laughs) Like, Well, that's the thing is we're getting to a point now that um, people our age who grew up on Tron and early Star Trek and all that, we're now the ones creating this stuff. So this it's one of those, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did it, or is this our imagination, or was our imagination invented by somebody else's imagination? Yeah. So. Well, and I think that there's a lot of mimicking. I know that some of the things that... I read an article mm-hmm. a couple years ago that some of the things that took place in Star Trek mm-hmm. were direct influences in some of our technology today. Right. Because some... I mean, it's pretty practical now, not all of it, obviously, because yeah. it is science fiction, <laughs> but things like carrying a communicator around on your chest right. was not anything that they did. Right. Now, we got flipping communicators in our ears. Right. Yeah. Called like, Bluetooth. Exactly. And like, or like the wristwatches that like, I mean, Dick Tracy. Yeah, exactly. And now, I, I don't think that most of them you can actually talk into and, and use as your phone, but I can't wait for that feature to happen. I think you can. Really? Like, I think that it, it may be the Apple Watch. Mm-hmm. Did it stop? No. No, it just paused. Okay. Sorry, I got distracted by Audacity. <laughs> um, I think one of them, you can actually answer the phone. Now, you can't talk directly into it. You have to have the, the Bluetooth in your ear. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it just it comes to show you that it's interesting to me how movies have influenced what we do today. Yeah, absolutely. Now, was there anything specifically that like just kind of jumped out that you found interesting about the way they did the movie or that was involved in the movie? Um, the way they did the faces was creepy. What do you mean? It it looked like a floating face. <laughs> Who are? What are you talking about? The faces, the humans, or the programs. The, floating face. They had a body. I know, but it looked like everything else. So at times it kind of floated. <laughs> oh, because it was so dark. I got yeah. you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Now, speaking of the faces, that's one thing that popped out to me was the fact that the way they played it off in the movie is that if you programmed a program... It looked like you. Right. And there's this attachment to the user. And um, I found that interesting. And of course, you know, coming from our background of of things um, with, with our faith... Um, that, that really does bring light to me, the stuff about how we are made in God's image. Yeah, exactly. And there's that attachment that we have that we we carry an aspect of. We carry his personality. We carry things about God within us. And now we can we can go rogue. <laughs> We're yeah. going to accept the virus, the MCP, and become part of that construct. Or we can, you know, submit ourselves to the Lord and, and be... What he really called us to be. Yeah. So. The the line where they were like, oh, that's Tron. He fights for the users. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Do it. There you go. Like, that, that really struck out to me. Yeah. Stuck out to me. Not struck out. <laughs> stuck out. All right. Cool beans. Cool beans. All right. So, any last thoughts about Tron before we, we close our thing out? I want to know. How the heck he gets back into the computer. Oh, yes. That's a great question, and we're going to handle that um, probably here in a couple of weeks. It might be another episode of Com Talk. I'm not really sure. Or it could just be us watching a movie. It could just be us watching a movie. <laughs> you so, never know. All right. So, uh, before we close this out, it is time for us to announce our Devoted Geek of the Week. Yay! And this week's Devoted Geek is not just one singular geek, but a whole group of Devoted geeks. Yay! And possibly a few people that aren't a geek, but we love them anyway. Exactly. And um, uh, it just turns out that... um, I say that. (laughs) It is Fusion Youth Ministry from Pleasant Grove, Assembly of God in Birmingham, Alabama. Now, 
Uh, for those of you who don't know, this youth ministry is led by Paul Turner, who hosted Geek Devotions this past Friday. Yay, Paul! And uh, we 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 purposely chose them this week. Um, I'm a, Paul's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's uh, been very helpful and supportive of of us over the year, and has helped me with some previous things. And so I really appreciate him. But his crew is taking a trip to Honduras this week. Um, at the time of recording this, they're about to leave. Um, they leave Monday, um, which is May 29th. They're leaving May 29th, yeah. um, Monday. They're leaving on Memorial Day. They are. But they're heading out to Honduras with Teen Challenge to do some some great stuff. And That's so awesome. I want to encourage you guys, if, as you listen to this, uh, say a prayer for them. Uh, be praying for Paul Turner and his crew. And um, and just let the Lord will, will um, A, take care of them, but also give them great opportunities to minister to people and, and do what we try to do through our, 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 our YouTube show and... Uh, here on podcast and our social media, which is simply this: let people know that they're loved, loved by by God, loved by someone who's created them in His image, and so um, that's a thing. That's um, a thing. Um, Fusion Youth Ministries. Uh, if you guys have a chance to listen to this, if Paul sh- shows you this, uh, he is a big geek, and you should be thankful for that. Yes, because <laughs> it, it's the reason why he comes up with all the creative things he comes up with. And for those of you in the youth ministry that are geeks, you should check out our stuff if you haven't already. Exactly. <laughs> but we're going to uh, be sending to Paul um, the little graphic we have for our devoted geeks of the week, and we're we'll posting this up on our Instagram. At Geek Devotions and our Facebook. So that's going to be happening pretty soon today, Sunday, which is when you're, well, the one that first becomes available for you guys to, to listen. Um, so that's it, guys. If you'd like to uh, be the Devoted Geek of the Week, all you have to do to qualify simply is to interact with Celeste and I. And we just Yay. might choose you. Comment on our social medias, comment on, on our YouTube show. Uh, and just, you know, have a good conversation with us, intelligent conversation with us. Um, really excited about, I don't know if you saw this, Celeste, hmm. uh, Paul's episode had some really good conversation with between him and Francisco. I f- did see that. From the Retro Rewind podcast. It was really interesting. And so I like to see more of that take place on our I was stuff. actually quite intrigued by the, the conversation. The conversation itself made me think. Oh, yeah. Because some of the questions Fran- Francisco vibe was asking because i refuse he is vibe he is vibe he is vibe um was asking what kind of made me think of huh that's, yeah that's interesting it is and that's why the guys that's why we encourage stuff to take place on our stuff on our on our social media is we want positive conversation growth people thinking now don't go trolling don't say things just to be a jerk and try to push a ideology or a theology that you know somebody will disagree with uh, don't push a pet theology, uh, but have a healthy conversation about yeah. things. We want to help facilitate that. So I think that's pretty much all we got to say. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to Calm Talk today. If you loved this episode, head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It is very appreciated. Until next Sunday. Until next Sunday. Ooh, <laughs> that was bad. Yep. Stay devoted. Peace and love, guys.